Now in this question, we're asked to solve this differential equation, given that t equals 0 when p equals 1. So to do something like this, we need to separate the variables. We need to put the p's on one side and the t's on the other. So if I was to divide both sides by p and 5 minus p and get rid of the dt, I would end up with this. It would be 1 over p multiplied by 5 minus p dp would equal 1 15th of dt. But I need to integrate both sides, so we'll slip an integral around this side and an, an integral around that side. Now, how do we go about integrating 1 over p multiplied by 5 minus p? Well, in the previous part of the question, they asked us to express this in partial fractions. And we got that this came out to be 1 over 5p plus 1 over 5 multiplied by 5 minus p. And so therefore, we've got to integrate all of this, okay, with respect to p. That's going to equal the 1 15th, the integral of 1 15th dt. Now at this stage, I notice that 5 is something that it goes into the 15. So we could clean this up by multiplying through by 5. If I multiply this term by 5, I'm going to get just 1 over p. I'm going to get 1 over 5 minus p. And if I multiply this term by 5, I'm going to get a third here. So that helps me because in the, the next section, that means we've got to integrate just simply 1 over p and then 1 over 5 minus p. And looking ahead, I can see that these two are very easy to integrate now. So this is looking good. So here we've got the integral of a third with respect to t. So what is the integral of 1 over p? Well, it's the natural log of p. So we've got that. And the integral of 1 over 5 minus p is going to be minus the natural log of 5 minus p. We should be familiar with this type of integral where if you differentiate the bottom and essentially if it gives you the top or where you have to multiply it by a constant, it's going to be a natural log type. So you can see that if I differentiate 5 minus p, I'd get minus 1. But if I multiply minus 1 by another minus 1, I get plus 1. Okay, so hope you got that on those two. And when it comes to integrating one third, it's just going to be one third t. And then don't forget we've got a constant, a constant coming from this integral, constant coming from this integral. If I take this constant that we would have to the other side, group it with the constant from this side, we just get one constant. I'm going to call that constant, let's say, c. Now I've got to work out what that constant c is, and I can do that from this information up here. We know that when t equals naught, p equals 1. So if I substitute these values into here, what do we get? Well, we get the natural log of 1, Let's just put it in here. Natural log of 1 minus the natural log of 5 minus 1, so the natural log of 4, okay, equals, well, this is going to go to 0, 1 third of 0, that's 0, and then you just get plus the constant c. Now, the natural log of 1 is 0, so that means that c is minus natural log of 4. So let's just come down here now. And we can see that, therefore, c is equal to minus the natural log 
of 4. So what we can do is substitute this value back into this line here. Let's call that 1, OK? So we can say sub in 1, let's put that in here, sub in 1. And what we've got is natural log of p, well, let's just write it here, natural log of p minus the natural log of 5 minus p equals a third t and then minus the natural log of 4. Now being a log equation, if we're to make p the subject here, we've got to reduce this down to two terms. One term on the left hand side of the equals and one term on the other side of the equals. So we need to group the natural logs together. And we've got three terms with natural logs in. So if I was to bring this term to this side, add the natural log of 4 to both sides, what I'd have is the natural log of 4 plus the natural log of p minus the natural log of 5 minus p equals a third t. Now I can group these together now using log rules. If we add two logs, it's the same as multiplying. And if I subtract one, it's the same as division. So this can be simplified to the natural log of 4 times p divided by 5 minus p. OK? And then that equals 1 third t. Now I've got my two terms, natural log on one side and a value on the other side. So I can anti-log this, remove this natural log. And if I do that, we get 4p over 5 minus p equals e to the power a third t. Now if I'm to make p the subject, I need to multiply both sides by 5 minus p. So therefore we've got 4p equals e to the third t multiplied by 5 minus p. And now I'm going to expand the bracket here. So we've got 4p equals 5e to the 1 third t minus p e to the 1 third t. So I've got two terms that contain the subject, p. So I now need to add this term to both sides. So if I do that, we've got 4p plus p e to the third t equals 5e to the third t. Well, this is long. So let's just come down here, squeeze this in. We can now factorize these two terms, we can pull out p as a common factor, so therefore we've got p multiplied by 4 plus e to the third t equals 5e to the third t. I hope you can see that because it is quite small at the moment. So if we now divide both sides by 4 plus e to the third t, we've got that therefore p equals 5e to the third t, all divided by 4 plus e to the third t. Now what we could do is divide each term here by e to the third t. So if I do that, I've got 5e to the third t divided by e to the third t is going to just leave me with 5. So as long as I do the same to top and bottom, it doesn't alter the value of the fraction. Here I'd have 4 divided by e to the third t. And for this term, e to the third t divided by e to the third t is 1. So I can now see that I've got p equals 5 over... Well, let's just write this 1 first, 1 there. And then this is the same as 4 times 1 over e to the third t, which can be changed to 4e to the minus a third t. Now, 
we were asked to show that P had the form some constant A, some integer in fact, it said A over another integer B and then another integer C E to the minus a third T. So you can see that we have got that particular format. So we can say where A is equal to 5, B is the 1, and finally C is equal to the 4. Not that we had to write down what these integers were, we had to just get it into this format. And because they are integers, as we can see up here, then we know that we've done it correctly. Okay, so some question I must admit, um, and uh, I haven't seen questions like that in the papers before as long as that, okay, if that's any consolation. So uh, there you go, all right.